to jinx it, but I think summer's actually here. In this episode, we're going to talk about the camera that I vlog with. Hello once again everybody and welcome to this thing I call Chosen Idea. My name is Marco, I'm a creative generalist. All that means is I've been lucky enough to get paid to do a bunch of creative stuff throughout my career. I've learned some things along the way and now it's my chance to pass those things along to you guys. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll learn a thing or two myself. I don't always vlog, but when I do, I do it with the Sony fdr 3000 action camera. That was my horrible impression of the most interesting man in the world, or otherwise known as the Dosekis man. If you're unfamiliar with his work, he is a hero of mine, uh, other than my parents, of course, and George Clooney, naturally. My friend Craig, who lives here in the building, uh, worked on that campaign, so sorry, Craig, for ripping off the Dosekis man. Anyways, so that opening sequence that you saw, that extreme wide angle, that was shot with the X3000. I'm just going to call it the X3000 because, frankly, Sony, that name, FDR X3000, long-winded. Uh, what happened to those days when you came up with names like Walkman? You really feel the music with a Sony Walkman? <laughs> I mean, I know I'm dating myself, but that was a cool name. Uh, I'll give you credit that you had Tony Hawk on board marketing this thing. Where is he, by the way? I think he's probably too busy with his own company. I'd like to first off apologize to FDR for dropping him from the name. Ray. This is not so much a product review as it is a public service announcement to all of you herniating yourself trying to be Peter McKinnon. This is a practical vlogging solution. Now, so you're not necessarily going to be carrying around a camera like this to make the next award winning short film. Although, not to say you can't, it's pretty incredible what you can do with a small camera nowadays, but you know, it's uh, not exactly the cinematographer's choice. In the interest of full disclosure, and out of respect for my viewing audience, I'll tell you that I have worked with Sony indirectly before. In fact, I've worked on this very camera as well, well, the marketing for this camera. Now, this in no way affects my personal decision as to what I buy. It's obviously a necessity to familiarize yourself with a product that you're designing something for, so uh, when I read the specs on this camera, I was super impressed. Now, I really had no interest in Sony's offerings in the action cam space because I had been a GoPro user since the original Hero. The optical image stabilization, 4K at 100 megabits. It was starting to parallel sort of what I had in my main camera. Before I go into exactly how I set up this rig, let me go into a little bit of the criteria that this solution had to fulfill for me. Number one was that it had to be compact and lightweight. It had to incorporate some kind of tripod. It had to have stabilization and not the digital kind. It, the ability to shoot 4K at 24 FPS and 120 in HD. High quality external audio recording. Weather resistance. The last one is where an action cam is in a league of its own. I had to be able to easily and quickly mount the camera to a host of surfaces including myself. I watched uh, Red Bull TV all morning so I figure, uh, figure I got this, you know? It's hotter than that. Yeah. It's way hotter than 20. Yeah. Is oh, okay. that that was interesting. That was a wasp on the lens, by the way. <laughs> this is just in-camera stabilization. I'm at my parents' house, and I'm showing you my vlogging camera. Say hi, Dad. Hi. <laughs> Okay, my flippy screen loving peeps out there to address the elephant in your room. No, it does not have a flip out screen. Sony does provide ways for you to monitor yourself over this camera either through their app on your phone or over a wrist mounted monitor that they sell. In true Sony fashion, it's a fortune so I wouldn't even bother. Uh, now inherently, a camera like this has got a very wide angle lens. Any vlogging camera would have a very wide angle lens because you have to keep yourself within frame at an arm's distance. Now if you can't keep yourself within frame at an arm's distance without a flippy screen, I'm kind of thinking maybe you've gone into the wrong hobby or profession. Just saying. I know they're nice, but you really don't need one. At least, in my opinion, you don't need one. If you can't keep yourself in frame at this distance, 
I ask that you do us all a favor, avoid guns, darts, archery, public bathrooms. Did I mention guns? Like I said, this solution is for me, and maybe after seeing that list of criteria that I had, some of the groans from the peanut gallery aren't as loud anymore. Anyway, let's get into how I set this thing up. So let's start with my tripod solution. This is the Manfrotto Pixie. I love this little thing. Super solid, red dot design award winner. This little button here, when you push it, it's a little quick release thingamajiggy for this ball head. I've had no problems whatsoever with it. On top of the Pixie, I mounted a mini Arca Swiss style quick release. Yes, it's true that the Arca Swiss is hardly quick compared to a lever type quick release, but it's small, lightweight, reliable, and everything else I have is on the same system, so it totally makes sense. This L-shaped bar here is a bit of custom work, but if you'd like to do it yourself, all you need is a dual flash cold shoe plate. Keep the cold shoe on the one side for the mic, and swap the actual cold shoe on the other side with another Arca Swiss release and you're in business. Many of you will recognize this mic as the very popular Rode Video Micro. If you plan to use the wireless functionality of the X3000, I highly recommend that you ditch the red coily wire that came with the Rode with a properly shielded alternative like the one I have here. The provided mic wire is a receiver for all kinds of interference from this camera. The Video Micro is an unbelievably capable little mic that works beautifully with this camera. This mic is equally at home on my main camera as well. Now most action cameras at this level of course are going to allow you to go underwater with them. The X3000 is no exception. Sony provides this underwater housing that's good for 60 meters or 197 feet. Now of course if you've got this housing on the camera you don't have access to the external microphone input here at the back. Not that you'd be using an external microphone underwater necessarily anyway. But if you want more protection for your camera and still want to utilize this external microphone input, um, you could buy another one of these and cut the back off and remove this door. A lot of users have done that. What I opted to do was buy this lens protection here. This is a real glass lens protector. It's got this lock on the top which secures it really nicely. Uh, unfortunately, this is not provided with the camera from Sony. It, for the cost of this camera, it's something that I think they really should have included. Well, I guess that's it for another one. If you found this episode interesting, entertaining, or useful, please consider hitting the like button. If you'd like to receive email notifications of when I post new videos, please think about subscribing. I'd like to leave you now with a little thing that I put together from a recent trip that we did to Quebec City. Uh, and, um, oh, yeah. Keep working to make your chosen idea a reality. Until next time, peace.